Hey guys, how are you doing? In this video, we will talk about the Nova Scotia PNP program. Getting Canadian PR is getting increasingly difficult, firstly because of the high cutoff score and secondly because Canada has paused the all program draws since March because of the pandemic. So having a PNP nomination is like a sure shot ticket to get the PR. So in this video, we will talk about the overview of the Nova Scotia PNP program. I will also tell you about the eligibility criteria. We will discuss the step-by-step -step process to apply for the nomination. I will tell you about the processing time, the fee and also some other important details as well. So if you are interested, stay tuned. Hey guys, I am Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and I regularly upload Canadian immigration and lifestyle videos. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please consider subscribing and pressing that bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos. Okay, so hello dreamers, I've created this new playlist here in my channel. So if you come over to my channel, Dream Abroad, you will find this new playlist, Canada PNP programs. If you click over here, you would find all those different videos like Saskatchewan PNP, about Alberta PNP program, about the Quebec, about the BC, the British Columbia PNP program, about the Tech Pilot program, about the Ontario PNP tech draws about the Ontario PNP Man Manitoba and about the rural and northern immigration pilot program as well I would add this same video of Nova Scotia PNP in the same playlist so that you don't have to even search for these videos And these videos would be available in one single playlist for your help Okay, before we discuss in detail about the Nova Scotia PNP program It is important to know something about the province I won't tell you in too much detail but I would highlight some of the points that are good to know. So Nova Scotia is actually towards the east of Canada. So it is the Canada's second smallest province. You see the size of it. Ontario is very huge. Quebec is very huge in respect to Nova Scotia. And it is one of the four Atlantic provinces. Do you recall that word Atlantic? So yes. Nova Scotia is also covered in the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program or the AIPP. I've made a different video about it. If you want, you can check it out. The population of Nova Scotia is less than 1 million, but because its size is also small, it is actually the second most densely populated province. PEI, Prince Edward Island, which is also the smallest province. Okay, now when we have talked about the population, let me tell you that the Population in there is 28% Scottish, English people are 28%, Irish are 20%, French are around 18 and German are around 10%. This is the majority of the population in Nova Scotia. The famous cities in there are Halifax, Sydney, Dartmouth and Amherst. Alright, now when we know about the province, now we can talk about the overview of the Nova Scotia PNP program. This program is actually called Nova Scotia Nominee Program or NSNP. There are nine different streams and let me list out all of them first of all. Then we'll talk about each one of them and you can select your stream. So the first one is Nova Scotia Labor Market Priorities. The second one is Labor Market Priorities for Physicians. The third one is Physicians, then Entrepreneur, then International Graduate Entrepreneur, then Skilled Worker, then Occupations in Demand, Nova Scotia Demand for Express Entry and the last one is Nova Scotia Experience for Express Entry. Alright, now let's talk about each one of them very quickly. The first one, Nova Scotia Labour Market Priorities. For this stream, they select candidates in the Express Entry system who meet provincial labour market needs to apply for nomination. So only those candidates who receive a letter of interest may apply. So for this stream, you cannot apply from your own. You should get a letter of interest from them. In short, they'll hand pick you if they have the requirement for your job in Nova Scotia. All right. Similarly, for the second stream, labor market priorities for physicians, they select physicians to apply for nomination through the express entry system. Only the candidates with an approved offer from Nova Scotia Health Authority who received a letter of interest may be able to apply. All right, now I'm talking about the third one for the physicians. Now this is a bit different from the first two streams because it actually assists Nova Scotia's 
public health authorities to hire general practitioners, family physicians and specialist physicians with the required skills for positions that haven't been unable to fill with a permanent resident or Canadian citizen. Okay, now the fourth one, entrepreneur. Many people are interested in this stream. So as the name suggests, this stream is for business owners who must start a new business or buy an existing business. After operating the business for a year, you may be nominated for the permanent residence status. Very important to note here that you should have a net worth of at least 600,000 Canadian dollars and you should be able to invest at least 150,000 Canadian dollars of your own money to establish a business in Nova Scotia. Okay, now when we have talked about the first four streams that you might be eligible for, the next three streams are very difficult to be eligible for most of my viewers, so I won't talk about it in detail. The third stream, International Graduate Entrepreneur, is for those recent graduates of Nova Scotia University or College who have already started or bought a business in Nova Scotia. And for the skilled worker and occupations in demand, you actually need to have a job offer letter, a full-time job offer letter. So I won't talk about these three in detail. I'll talk about the Nova Scotia Demand Express Entry. Now this is the most popular stream among foreign nationals. So I will talk about it in detail, telling you the eligibility requirements and continuing this video with this stream. But before that, let me talk about the last stream, which is Nova Scotia Experience for Express Entry. And for this stream, as the name suggests, they select highly skilled individuals who have at least one year of work experience in Nova Scotia in a high skilled occupation. So out of all these streams, I'm pretty sure that most of my viewers would be interested to know about the Nova Scotia demand for express entry. So let's talk about it in detail now. Okay, now we'll talk about the most famous stream in detail, which is Nova Scotia demand for express entry. Now this stream has got two different categories, category A and category B. The first category, category A, is for applicants who have a job offer from a Nova Scotia employer. And this category remains open throughout the year. Of course, there are some other eligibility requirements, but the job offer being the major roadblock for most of the people I would not discuss about category A in detail, I would move on to category B. However, I would provide you the link if you want to check the details of category A. Okay, now the category B. It is for the applicants with experience in an opportunity occupation and it is expected to open and close throughout the year. So you don't actually need a job offer, but you need to have a work experience in one of the opportunity occupations. Which are those occupations? We'll discuss shortly. Now, as of today, this stream is closed, but whenever it opens, it closes very soon because of the demand. So if you want to apply for this stream, you should be very attentive. Okay, now we can discuss the eligibility requirement for category B. First of all, you should be in one of the target occupations as identified in the Nova Scotia demand for express entry guide. I'll show you this guide and we'll discuss the target occupations as I told you earlier. You should also have a profile registered in the express entry system you should be able to score 67 points or more on the streams six selection factors which are those factors what is the points table we'll discuss very shortly apart from that you should have at least one year of skilled work experience in one of the target occupations you should have a Canadian high school credential or equivalent so you should have your education credential assessment done if you want to apply for this category. Apart from that, you should be able to prove your language ability in English or French at CLB 7. So if you're going for IELTS, you should score CLB 7 there to be eligible for this category. And the final requirement is that you should show enough financial resources to successfully settle in Nova Scotia. Okay, so these are all the eligibility requirements. Now we can see that guide and check out the points table and also the target occupations. Alright, so this is the application guide that I was talking about. It contains a lot of information about this particular stream. 
Uh, both the categories, category A and category B, it contains a lot of information like uh, the fee and the processing time as well. So here they have mentioned that there's no provincial application fee for NSNPs. So you don't have to pay a single penny for your nomination from Nova Scotia. Such a good point. Uh, apart from that, they have mentioned that the processing time is actually around uh, three months. So you'd actually take three months or more. So in general, you can say they will take around three months time to process your application and give you the nomination. Okay, so this was about the processing time and the fees. Now we can check the points table and we can also check the target occupations. So if you scroll a bit up, you would find some more details in here. The eligibility criteria for the principal applicant. Here they've clearly mentioned about the category A. I won't get into too much details. If you want, you can check those out. About the category B, there are 11 occupations that are listed out currently and this can change in future. So there are all these occupations. All these NOC codes are also mentioned. So all these are from NOC A and NOC B. So if you are from any one of these, you would be eligible to apply for the Nova Scotia PNP category B whenever it opens. Okay, so this was about the eligible occupations. Now let's talk about the points table. So this is the points table mentioned here. Apart from the express entry points, those are totally different. Don't get confused with those. Here you have to score 67 points in order to be eligible for Nova Scotia PNP program. So here you would get a maximum of 25 points. We'll discuss each one of those. A maximum of 28 points for your language proficiency test. After that, 15 points for your work experience. A maximum of 12 points for your age. A maximum of 10 points for your arranged employment. And 10 points for adaptability. Okay, so uh, the factor one is education. You can get a maximum of 25 points if you hold a PhD degree. If you hold a master's degree, you would get 23 points and so on. After that, for the language proficiency test, if you score CLB 9 or above, you would get 6 points each for all of these capabilities. And the points would differ if you score a lower CLB level. So getting a better IELTS score would be much more beneficial for you guys. Apart from that, the work experience is also mentioned. How much point will you get for the work experience? So if you have six years or more of work experience, you'll get the maximum points because you'll get 15 points then. For your age, you'll also get some points. So if you are from 18 to 35 years of age, you'll get maximum points and that is 12 points. After that, it would reduce by one point for every one year that gets increased to your age. Okay, then talking about the arranged employment. So if you could arrange a valid job offer, then obviously you'd get more points. You would get 10 more points. So that would be very beneficial. Here are some of the eligibility requirements for that, but I won't get into too much detail. If you want, you can check it out. Then you would get 10 points for adaptability as well. Are the adaptability factors? They have mentioned it here. If you want, you can definitely check it out. If you have relatives in Nova Scotia, you would get some certain points for that. You, you could get five points. If you have previous work experience uh, in uh, Nova Scotia, then you would also get, you know, 10 points there. So this is all in all uh, the main points that, that would fetch you those 67 marks. And if you could get those 67 marks, then you would be eligible. Then after that, you have your proof of funds. What is the exact number? It is actually same as the proof of funds for Express Entry program. So you can check it out. After that, they've mentioned the application and the assessment process. It's a very descriptive step-by-step -step process. So step one, you have to create your Express Entry profile. So obviously for this stream, you need to have an, your Express Entry profile. So go and create your profile. That is the very first step. After that, you need to prepare and submit your NSNP application online. So they've mentioned few steps here. You have to create an account online, save your application in process, and then submit the supporting documents as PDF attachments in that application. What they'll do after that, they'll assess your application. Their immigration office will actually assess your application. They'll do some background checks and completion checks, eligibility checks. And after that, they would give you a decision. And hopefully, if everything is right, then they'll issue you a one-time nomination letter. So when you get that letter, after that, it will be a piece of cake for you because you'll get 600 additional points and you would get ITA in the very next draw. After you get the ITA, it would be the federal process. So this is it. 
this is the complete process the step by step process pretty easy but the difficult task is to get that nomination letter so this was it this was all the information that i wanted to share with you guys i would definitely share this particular pdf file which is the application guide here you would also get to know about the process of it you would also get to know how you can actually apply the link would also be present so if you're interested whenever the category b opens or if you're eligible for category a you can definitely apply for it so thank you guys for watching this video i really hope that the information shared in this video was helpful to you if yes please click the like button if you have any queries put them down in the comment section below and yes if you haven't subscribed my channel yet what are you waiting for definitely go ahead and subscribe my channel so you don't miss any of videos like these thanks again for watching this video